Hi everybody, Captain Al speaking with your training tips designed to help make you a better, more knowledgeable flight simmer, pilot, or aviation enthusiast. Have a seat, let's strap in and stow the HUD and see what is on the horizon today. Our briefing today will cover under the category of flight training, checklist usage part two. Let's head over to the virtual simulator where we will be airborne and cover the remainder of the uh, checklist. Okay, we're uh, airborne out of Seattle now and uh, we've just retracted the flaps. Once we brought the flaps up, we brought the gear handle to off and then we can accomplish the uh, after takeoff checklist for Boeing. So the after takeoff checklist would be the landing gear is up and off, which it is, and the flaps are up. See the indication after 10 seconds blanks and goes away. And so that completes the after takeoff checklist. We're leveling at 9,000. We've got a crossing restriction at uh, Harab to cross at or above 10,000. So Harab is a little ways away. We'll go ahead and continue the climb. We'll say we're cleared up to flight level 220. And let's continue the VNAV climb. Thrust rough VNAV speed. Up we go. Let's go to the subsonic uh, checklist, which is just behind here. And we'll start up the simulator here. Now on the other checklist, the subsonic flight training checklist, we don't have an after takeoff checklist, we have a climb checklist. And the climb checklist will take place when we're out of 10,000 feet, which we are right now. So in this case, once we're out of 10,000 feet, we can uh, turn the landing lights off. So we'll come up to the overhead panel and we'll turn off the uh, landing lights. And if we had the turn off lights, we'll turn those off. They do turn off automatically. Once you're airborne and in the air mode, the runway turn off and the taxi lights will turn off even though the switches are on. We still want to come up here and turn all the lights off. And then we can accomplish the uh, climb check. So the climb check says that the landing lights are off. The aft cargo heat is on. That's in case we left it off on the ground and we want to use it in the air above 10,000 feet because we anticipate colder temperatures. We just It is on in this case, but we're just making sure it's on. Uh, the packs are normal, which they are. The gear is up and off, which it is, and the flaps are up. So if we move this uh, checklist out of the way, actually let's move it up here. And then we can see things a little bit better. So the landing lights are off, the aft cargo heat is on. The packs are normal. The gear downstairs is up and off. We saw that previously. The flaps are up and the climb check is complete to transition. Then we'll be waiting until we're out of 18,000 feet, which is the transition in the U.S., which we're just about there. So we'll select standard. There's transition altitude, 18,300. And 
my checklist is always in the way. And I'll go ahead and uh, well, actually all three of them. I have it. I have it linked so that all three of them go to standard. I'm going to push it. So then at the transition altitude, altimeters are standard and climb checklist complete. Okay, here we are further in the flight now. We're at uh, flight level 390. We've uh, programmed in the approach for the ILS 28 right at San Francisco. Um, we've already gone through the Y pattern on the CDU to set up for the approach and the pilot monitoring programmed the approach, the pilot flying checked it, the pilot flying briefed it. And we're at the point where we are 18 miles from the top of the descent. We've been cleared down to um, 1 1000 on the Dega 2 arrival into San Francisco with a Millbeck transition and uh, we're to comply with all the restrictions on the arrival and the transition. So if we go to the legs page you'll see that uh, we're just approaching found. We're about 22 miles from found right now and we do have a restriction at Melbeck to cross at or above uh, 29,000 feet. And then uh, Joni at 280 knots at, uh, at or below flight level 280, but above flight level 240. And then we have restriction to cross Bigelow at 280 knots at or below flight level 230, but above uh, flight level 190. And then we've got a restriction to cross Lazit at 280 knots at or below 16,000 and then another restriction to cross Bodega at or below 13,000 and then to cross Cork at 1 1,000 at 250 knots. Then from uh, Cork we expect to go to Bricks and then from Bricks it's out on a 140 track for vectors and then from there it would be vectored assuming it would be vectored for the uh, ILS runway 28 right which consists of Seepin, Axmal, and the runway. And then the missed approach is a 284 track until passing 420, which is a conditional waypoint so that there's no turns uh, in LNAV. Uh, and then a 251 track to intercept the 283 course to Vicu. And now we're going out to Vicu to hold. And if we checked our plate, we would see that's a 281 inbound course with uh, right turns. And of course, all this would be checked against the uh, against the plate, against the arrival, uh, against the star, and against the uh, approach chart as well. So we just passed the top of descent point, and we're starting down. Notice our VNAV page changed automatically from the cruise page to the descent page. Once you passed over the top of descent, the vertical deviation indicator uh, popped up when we crossed the top of descent. We had a lower altitude in the MCP window, so the airplane, once it hit the top of descent, it's starting down. You can see it's starting down a little above the path as it is right now. Normally, once it hits the top of the sun, it's pretty well on the path. So we are showing that we're above the path at this point, and we'll kind of watch it to see if we catch up with the path without intervening. Obviously, we could add some speed brakes if we wanted to right now to try to get on the path. We kind of look and see what our wind is doing right now. We do have kind of a quartering tailwind, so but we'll keep an eye on it. Right now, it's, it is catching up. You can see it's at 1,300 feet and decreasing. So the nose is pitching over to get you on the path. You notice we're in VNAV speed because we're not on the path yet. Um, a little bit of an anomaly there because normally it would, when it hits the top of the scent, um, the path would pop up and you'd be right on the path and you'd go down. In this case, it popped up with us being high on the path. 
but it's catching up. You can see it's uh, 800 feet and decreasing now. Airplane pitching over. And we've got our first restriction at Milbeck at or above flight level 290. Looks like we're going to make that no problem. That's in another 4.7 miles. So no problem there. And you can see when the path comes back to within about um, Notice when the path comes back within uh, 400 feet, uh, the digital indication will go away, and then the pointer will start to move. This from the middle position here to the end here is 400 feet. Anything beyond 400 feet, you get the digital indication telling you how far off the path you are. Our next restriction is going to be uh, Joni to cross at uh, 280 knots at or below flight level 280 but above flight level 240. And we'll see right now that with this wind, right now it's a quarter in tailwind at 90 knots. And it looks like now we're kind of stabilized here. We're not really catching up on the path. So we might have to help it with some speed brakes here. So let's do that. We'll extend some speed brakes here and help it a little bit. Let's see if they come down and speed brakes are extended. see if we can catch up with the path a little bit. So at or below flight level 280, we're getting there right now. And above flight level 240. And 280 knots, so it should start to slow a little bit here. You can see we're catching up on the path now with the speed brakes. We're within 400 feet now. And we'll go ahead and stow the speed brakes now. There's VNAP path on our enunciation. And the speed brakes are stowed now. Wrong button. So it's time to do the descent checklist. And let's do it with the Boeing checklist first. Our next restriction is going to be uh, Bigelow, 280 knots at or below flight level 230, but above flight level 190. We are in the path. Uh, we are starting to go slightly high in the path. Again, this tail end might be giving us a little bit of a problem, but the airplane will pitch over to keep us on the path and it will allow the speed to vary. You see the speeds come back to 280 knots. So let's accomplish the descent checklist at this time with Boeing. So it says recall checked. So let's push recall. We'll check for any messages. You can see we have a blank alert screen. That's good. So recall is checked. Auto brakes. Again we look here. Auto brakes are two. If you want to look here, great, but primarily look here. Auto brakes are two. And then landing data. Landing data we find on the approach reference page. And notice that's the page it takes me to when I push init ref because the logic knows that that's the page I want to look at right now. So when I push that, it takes me to the approach reference page. If this wasn't the page I wanted to, remember you go to index. And you can always get to the approach reference page. But the logic is such that it brings up this page when you're airborne automatically when you're pushing that ref. Flap 30 speed for landings, 138. We'll update that. It's 139 here, so it's come down by a knot, so we'll update it. And the landing data would be VREF 30 
138 and minimums uh, 218. And I didn't set that up. So let's go ahead and set that up. And the barrel minimums. And I think it's 218 on this approach from the other video that we did. It's like we're crossing Bigelow. And Bigelow was at at or below flight level 230 but above 190 and you can see we're there. So we're doing good on our restrictions. Okay, so our minimums are, uh, two, I think they're 213, we'll say they are. We'll decrease our range a little bit here so we can see. And our next restriction is to cross the Lazit uh, 280 knots at or below 16,000. You'll notice we're approaching the transition level now. And we would have preset our altimeter, which is uh, in San Francisco. is. There's transition and we'll set down. We'll preset that. But I'm doing the video. Let's just set it now for 2987. Uh, we'll update that as we go here. We'll check the San Francisco weather. We would have done that already with the ATIS. And approach briefing is completed. So the descent checklist will be recall check, auto brake, two landing data, VRF 30 is uh, 138 and the minimums are 213. Approach briefing completed. And that would be the checklist for Boeing. Now let's just, uh, this is going to freeze the simulator while I get the my checklist. Now the check the subsonic flight training checklist uh, combines the descent checklist and the approach checklist. So whereas you could start the descent checklist when you're starting your descent with the Boeing procedure and then once you get below the transition level you would go ahead and then do the approach checklist once you set the altimeter for your uh, for your landing airport. You know while, while the simulator is frozen let's go get the um, Let's see what the conditions are for San Francisco. Because I forgot to do that in making this video. Let's see, San Francisco, the weather there. Uh, looks like the winds are 260, 14 knots. The uh, visibility is good, 10 miles. Uh, the altimeter is 3007. Temperature 17, dew point 13. So weather looks pretty good there. And let's go ahead and set, uh, what did I say it was? 3007. So let's set the um, altimeter for that. Oops, going the wrong way. Three zero zero seven. Seven, 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 there we go, three, zero, zero, seven. So since we're below 18,000 feet like we are now, uh, we can go ahead and, uh, for the subsonic checklist, 
we can do the descent and approach checklist once we're below the transition and we've changed our uh, we push standard and set our changed our preset altimeter to become our actual altimeter setting now below the transition. And so at this point we do the descent and approach checklist and the descent and approach checklist would be and yeah, we'll start the simulator again. Next restriction is lazit at or below 16,280 knots. So you can see we're uh, notice we're a little fast on the speed because of the tailwind. And at about 10 knots above, it gives us a drag required message. So we'll go ahead and extend the speed brakes to slow us down a little bit. The 280 is treated as a limit speed, not as a commanded speed necessarily. But uh, we'll get a little speed brake here to get back on the 280 knots because of the unforecast tailwind. Still got about uh, 60 knots in the tail. We're just about at 280 knots, we're on the path and we'll stow the speed brakes. And we'll clear the message drag required. So for us it'd be uh, transition level altimeters would be 3007 and whatever we passed at, let's say 17,980 feet. The recall is checked. I checked it. Clear screen. Seatbelt sign is on. We never turned it off. Allowable landing weight is checked. We'll be checking our landing weight to determine we are below the max landing weight. And certainly we're well below 630,000 pounds. No problem there. Approach briefing completed. Minimums. Barrow set 213 feet. Approach frequencies in course. And this would be VRF 30 is 138, approach numbers checked and set. And auto brakes, 2. So that's how our descent and approach check would go. Now we're doing on the uh, restrictions here. Let's bring our range down a little bit. Away. So we're going cork now, 250 at 1 1000. So this speed should start coming back here any second to uh, get us to 250 at 1 1000. And we'll kind of monitor there it goes. So the speed goes back to 240 in VNAV. It gives us a 10 knot buffer in case there's an unforecast tailwind. Like you can see, we do have a pretty good 50 knot tailwind here at 1 1000. Um, so that's designed to, uh, VNAV is designed to give you a little bit of a buffer because VNAV will track the path and allow the speed to vary. Again, we can help it a little bit back to 250 with speed brakes if we need to. So we're crossing cork at 250 at 1 1000. And we're just about there. Speed VNAV out as we level at 1 1000. And there we go, crossing cork at 250, 1, 1000. And now our next is uh, bricks, and then we're going to go out on vectors. And let's say ATC descends us to, uh, let's go down to 6,000. And speed brakes extended, it still rose. And we'll go down to 6,000 feet. So in this case, we could elect to use VNAV, or if ATC descended us to 6,000, I'd probably want to use flight level change because chances are they want me to get down to 6,000. They don't want me to dilly-dally down to 6,000. And if you start being vectored off, it'll start VNAV will start looking at this 3,000 or above the seatbelt, and it may slow down your rate of descent uh, when you're in VNAV. So once you get in the terminal area and ATC starts to either vector you or start to give you changes in speed or changes in altitude and you're below 10,000, many times we'll transition from VNAV to flight level change. So I've done that now, anticipating that ATC would want me to get down to 6,000 and sometimes in VNAV your path could, uh, depending on where you are, the path could be, could slow you to where you're descending at four or 500 feet a minute and then ATC may say, hey, I need you down to 6,000.
So at some point you're normally transitioning to uh, flight level change. So let's run over this descent and approach checklist one more time in real time. So at the transition we say altimeters uh, 3007 inches, 17,800 feet. Recalls checked, seatbelt signs on, allowable landing was checked, approach briefing is completed, minimums, a barrow set 213 feet, approach frequencies in course, uh, VRF30 is uh, 138, approach numbers checked and set, auto brakes 2, and descent and approach checklist complete. Okay, so now we're being vectored, uh, or we're still on the arrival, the 140 track for vectors. We're anticipating a turn by ATC. And we'll get our heading book here to course. Now let's say ATC, now they give us a heading of 110 vectors for the approach. So we'll go 110, we'll go to heading and select. And we'll start to slow down. And ATC now descends us to 4,000. Now that we're on radar vectors and we're off the arrival, we can extend the line into seep and anticipating they're going to turn us there. So we'll bring seep into the scratch pad, seep into the top. 284 is the final approach course inbound. It's not in here, so we have to type it. 284, line select to intercept course, and that's going to extend the line into seep and it's a 699 mile line, so it's, as long as he vectors us, if he keeps vectoring us way the heck out here due to spacing, we can see where our reference to the extended center line is. So that looks good, we'll execute that. And we'll start to slow down, so we'll go to flaps 1, and we'll set the speed for flaps 1. Now where we set the speed would be dependent upon um, Maybe ATC says maintain speed 220. In that case, we want to keep it here. We want to keep it at 220. If there's no speed restrictions, then we're going to put it at the minimum maneuvering speed. Now, some airlines will put that at 5 knots above or 10 knots above the flap 1 speed. Right where I've got it now is 10 knots above. That's a better body angle. Uh, so some airlines like that. Um, some airlines will do five knots above. If you put the bottom of the box, rest the bottom of the box right on top of the one, that's five knots above uh, your minimum maneuvering speed for flaps one. So this would be five knots. Right about there would be ten knots halfway between. And of course some airlines will put it right on box the one or put it right on the one. Uh, most Asian carriers do that. Most um, Boeing procedures do that, um, but some airlines, if they like a little better body angle, they will go ahead and uh, put five knots or ten knots above. So let's go to flaps five. We'll slow down further, and we'll just use Boeing procedures here. We'll, we'll just box the five and put it right on the minimum maneuvering speed. And let's start a left turn to the base leg. And let's say we're clear down to 3,000. And we can see we're 19 miles from the airport at this point. We've completed the descent and approach, and we're waiting for the landing check. We'll come back up with the Boeing checklist now. And we'll restart the sim.
side since we're on a base leg we'll go flat 10 and we'll slow to our flat 10 speed again I'm going to the minimum maneuvering speed because he hasn't given me any speed restrictions if he gives me speed restrictions then I'd have to maintain that speed he might say maintain you know 180 to the marker or whatever and let's bring the range down just a little bit And let's say ATC turns us left now to a heading of uh, 32, let's make it 310, and they clear us for the approach. So we're clear for the approach. We've got the, uh, we can see we've got the proper identifier here. It's tuned and identified. We can go ahead and arm the approach. In which case, uh, the original autopilot stays in command. having trouble maintaining 3,000, but we'll see. Should go back up to 3. And there's localizer capture. Localizer's alive and localizer capture. So we are 16 miles. We'd go to progress page two to see our wind. You know, right now we've got a headwind component of 10, and a crosswind component, um, a left crosswind component of 8, and the true winds are 263 at uh, 14. Usually one pilot would be on the legs page, and the other pilot would be on the progress page one and then on a short finally usually progress page two There's, that's not written in stone but that's a those are good pages the progress page one gives you a distance to the airport and then once you're on a short final um, your wind information is right here yet the pilot flying usually will stay on the legs page So we're up to the, on the Boeing checklist. We're up to the, oh, we didn't do the, did we do the approach checklist? I'm not sure we did the approach checklist for the Boeing, but approach checklist is just altimeters. Once you're below the transition level, altimeters, 3007 inches. Approach checklist complete. It's just one item. Again, you can do these two separately in the descent and then below the transition level. Glide slopes alive. So we'll go gear down. We'll go flaps 20. Move my CDU so I can see. And then let's set the speed for flaps 20. And we'll arm the speed brakes. And the speed brakes are armed. So gear down, flap 20. We've set the speed. We've armed the speed brakes. And we're approaching Seepin. Final approach fix is axmal. We should cross that around 1800 on the ILS. We could stay in this configuration until we get a little closer to axmal, and then we'll go ahead and uh, configure for our final flap, which is going to be 30. We're cutting into our reserves a little bit, looks like. Huh? Page 24.5, and let's see our flight plan did show 24.8, yeah, cutting into our reserves a little bit. So the glide slope is captured. Once the glide slope is captured, we can set our missed approach L2. That's going to be uh, 3,000 at uh, VICU, and that is already set, so must approach L2 to set. And then approaching AXMO, you know, we can wait till we're about a mile and a half or so from AXMO, then we can do our final flight. 2,500. 
Let's do it now. Let's get the CPU out of the way again. Let's do it now. Just a little bit early. 425, 430. And we'll set our final speed. Bumpiness here in uh, San Francisco. Gee, I thought the weather was better than this. Um, so we, now that we got gear down flaps 30 and our approach altitude set, we can uh, do our landing checklist, which is going to be speed brake, armed, landing gear, down, flaps 30. If we go to the Subsonic checklist, it's almost the same thing. Speed brakes, armed, landing gear, down and green, instead of just down, and flaps, 30, 30, green. That means the handle's at 30, the indication's at 30, and it's green indication indicating the flaps are at 30. So landing check would be speed brakes, armed, landing gear, down and green, flaps, 30, 30, green. Landing check was complete. So we're all set up for landing. If we turn some lights on here, I'll probably have to turn these lights on. These would have been on anywhere from 18,000 to. Uh, lights on Storms are still on. Let's go outside here and see what we got. There we are. So our landing checklist is complete. You'll notice that uh, below 1,500 feet uh, on the radar altimeter, just about, about 1,450 or so, all three autopilots engaged. We have uh, flare and rollout armed, land three enunciated for an auto land. I'll let it auto land today, since I'm busy showing these checklists. So we are um, all completed with the landing checklist now, and uh, set up the land. Ah, it's the weather here. I think boy, the weather looked like it was a lot better. It's almost a nine statue miles. I guess it's not bad. So, you know, normal call, it would have been 8,000 feet. 500 feet, we check land three. We're approaching minimums at this point. Approaching minimums. And here comes minimums. Minimums. Minimums and landing. We'll say about 50 feet will get flare, 25 feet idle, 5 feet roll out. So right about in here we should see flare, comes flare, 25 feet idle, 5 feet roll out. And we should touch down. The reversers out. Speed break up. Reversers normal and 60 knots. And we'll continue straight ahead. It looks like we're going to take that same high speed we had the uh, on the other video. I'm going to get the uh, high speed here and turn off. Mm-hmm. 
did an auto land. Uh, I think that's the first time I've done an auto land. See how that works in here. Not bad. Well, let's hold short here. And we'll pause for a second as we do the uh, after landing procedure, which you've already covered in the other video, so stand by. Okay, I'm back with you now. I just did the after landing procedure. Now you can see the flaps have just uh, come up here. And with this indication, it will disappear after about 10 seconds. So, as we taxi in, um, at some point the captain would call for the after landing procedure or he'd say flaps up after landing procedure once he's clear of the runway and uh, the after landing procedure would be done followed by the after landing checklist now you'll notice that with Boeing we go from the landing checklist to the shutdown checklist there is no after landing checklist it's just a procedure, as we said in the other video. It's just a procedure. There is no after landing checklist. So uh, a lot of airlines have heartburn with that. And they, that's one of the first things they correct is they say, oh, no, we can't have that. There's no after landing checklist. It actually works just fine with Boeing procedures when you're used to Boeing procedures. There's not a problem with it. Um, you'll notice I did the Boeing procedure in that I did not turn off the flight director. My procedure would be to turn off the flight director here. But I'm going to leave the flight directors on just like it's a, the Boeing procedure right now. So I started the APU and I brought the lights off and the strobes off. And then we came down here and um, actually I didn't do this. Got my weather radar off and he'll get his terrain off. And... Um, you know, we brought the flaps up, and the captain got the speed brake down, and he got the, uh, his, the weather radar off. And we've put the transponder to, you know, standby, uh, to a uh, transponder here for San Francisco. So, once we do the procedure, that's all that would have to be done for Boeing because there is no after landing checklist. So let's go to the subsonic uh, checklist, which is hiding here behind. And you'll notice with me, or with my, my checklist, I do have an after landing uh, checklist. And the checklist would be landing and strobe lights off. So you can see the strobe lights are off and the landing lights are off, the taxi lights on. Uh, flaps. Uh, we saw they were up here. Up. Stabilizer, six units. Um, some airlines do this, some airlines don't. I mean, it's not a Boeing procedure to do this. Uh, of course, my checklist is in the way again, so <laughs> let's move it. Um, and let's unfreeze the simulator. So this actually is not a Boeing procedure to, to go to six units, but um, six units is the setting that puts the stabilizer, especially in a passenger airplane, it puts the um, stabilizer back to a fairly level position for the stabilizer tank for fueling. Um, so typically not a bad procedure to put the stabilizer at six units and it just gets it more to a level playing field if you're going to fuel the stabilizer for the next uh, long leg back to wherever the airplane is coming. Uh, speed brakes, remember the captain got that down. And then radar terrain off. Let me move this again, get that out of the way, get this out of the way so we can see there, we can see it a little better. Radar terrain off. Uh, the transponder is to transponder. And the auto brakes are right there off at the bottom here. So the after landing check would be 
landing and strobe lights are off, flaps are up, stabilizer is six units, speed brakes down, radar terrain off, transponder, transponder, auto brakes off after landing check complete. So again, this does back up the flow pattern. This is the idea of this, that it backs up the flow pattern so that what you did from memory um, can be referenced by checklist to make sure that it has been accomplished. Again, the Boeing checklist does not have an after landing checklist, just a procedure. With me, it's a procedure followed by the after landing checklist. Okay, so let's go back outside and then we will continue our taxi and uh, we'll see you remember we did do this in the other video for the the actual uh, procedure here but now we're going to follow it with the checklist so we'll see you at the gate stand by okay so we're back and we're at the gate we stopped the airplane we set the parking brake and we did the shutdown procedure and now we're going to follow it by the shutdown checklist. So we'll start with Boeing. The shutdown checklist for Boeing says hydraulic panel set. So the hydraulic panel is set in the sense that, remember with the procedure, we did number four to aux and then number one, two, three to off. So right now that's set the demand pumps are set and the engine driven pumps are left on so that's what set means fuel pumps are off all the fuel pumps that we had on are off the flaps are up and again we can see here that the flaps are up we could also look at the handle and see the flaps are up and the parking brake is set for now and again we could cancel here to see that parking brake is set remember that once we get the chalk signal then we can release the parking brake if we choose to and then once we uh, release the parking brake the first officer or in our case us we can come up and turn the demand pump to uh, number four to off. And then we could respond here, uh, parking brake released or parking brake set. If you're gonna keep it set. Fuel control switches cut off. One, two, three, four. and weather radar is off. Remember the captain got that. As part of his after landing, the captain uh, turned that off. So the shutdown checklist is complete. So again, in real time, it would look like, or it'd sound like shutdown checklist, hydraulic panel is set, fuel pumps are off, flaps up, parking brake released, fuel control switch is cut off, weather radar off, Shutdown checklist complete. Now let's just go to their securing. Let's go to the subsonic checklist now and look at that. Uh, this is the parking checklist. Uh, so the Boeing checklist is called the shutdown checklist. Uh, I call it the parking checklist. Just uh, again, minor difference. Uh, Seatbelt sign is off. Again, we come down here and check that again. Seatbelt sign is off. Hydraulic demand pumps, number four aux, case, off. Number four aux and off. Exterior lights are set. And that means that come down here and that means that all your lights are off you know, the landing lights are off the runway turnoffs are off the taxi lights off the beacons off 
the strobe lights are off, everything's off, except the nav lights would remain on. So that's why we don't say off, we say set, because the nav lights stay on. Uh, ice protection auto or off. Fuel pumps off. Beacon, Let's see again, beacon down here is off. Fuel control switches cut off, we saw that. And if the chocks are in, then chocks in. Number four hydraulic demand pump off. Go off. And then brakes uh, either off or set. Again, whatever your choice is. You can release the brake when this goes to off, or you can leave the brake set if you choose to. And that would complete the parking checklist. So how it would sound again is, so seatbelt sign is off, hydraulic demand pumps number four aux off, exterior lights are set, ice protection auto, fuel pumps off, beacon off, fuel control switches cut off, chocks in, number four hydraulic demand pump off, brakes off, parking checklist complete. And then we would go with our securing checklist. So let's go back to the uh, Boeing checklist. I remember the securing checklist was those, uh, well for Boeing it's four items, for me it's five items. So we would go ahead and take the IRUs and turn them off. We'll do the procedure here real quick. The exterior lights, or I'm sorry, emergency lights off. Uh, we have to move our checklist here again. Let's move this one, let's move this one up here, let's move this one up here. Let's unfreeze the simulator. And we'll turn the F cargo heat off, we'll turn the packs off. That's the Boeing procedure. So basically IRUs, emergency lights, half cargo heat, packs. And then we would do the checklist, securing checklist. IRS is off, emergency exit lights off, packs off. Secure checklist complete. Notice again the flow pattern has you turning off the half cargo heat, but it's not on the checklist. The subsonic securing check. Let's bring that uh, over a little bit here so we can see it. You'll notice now with the subsonic checklist that I've got the securing check and I've got a termination check. Now the termination check is the same thing as the electrical power down procedure. Remember in Boeing that's going to be under supplemental normal under electrical and then when you go to electrical you see that one of the in the index there it'll say electrical power down this would be if we're going to take power off the airplane completely and that would be the electrical power down procedure uh, notice it wasn't on the boeing checklist the boeing checklist ended with the securing check uh, so you'd have to go into the FCOM, into the Flight Crew Operations Manual, into the Supplemental Normal section under Electrical, Electrical Power Down, and then you could complete that uh, read and do. But I've got it on the checklist for a termination check. If you're not going to do a termination check, then you don't have to accomplish that. So the securing check here for me would be one other item, and that would be to turn the window heat off as well. So it would be IRUs, emergency lights, half cargo heat, packs, and window heat. And then we do the security checklist. IRS is off, emergency exit lights off, window heat off, half cargo heat off, and packs are off. You notice we added that uh, in here because it's, again, it's checked. And that would be the securing checklist is complete. 
And then we could leave it like this. Again, if they hook up external power, great. We can switch over to external. We can turn all our lighting down, especially if we're going to do a termination check. And then if we were going to ter do a termination check, then we could do we could do a read and do. So I won't take the time to do that. Remember, that in the lighting, we have the uh, turning down all our integral lights, the internal lights to turn all our lighting down. Then we could turn the EPU off. Uh, we could select external as desired, or, or it's off. Standby power off, and then we wait two minutes, uh, and then we turn the battery off. The reason we wait two minutes is because we would lose if we turn the battery off early, we're going to lose our fire detection capability for the EPU. We could fight the fire, but we wouldn't know we had a fire. The fire protection is on the EPU hot battery bus, but the detection is on the EPU battery bus. So if you shut down the battery, you're going to isolate the uh, detection capability and you wouldn't know you had a fire. So that's why you wait when you turn the battery switch off, um, or when you turn the APU off, you wait two minutes before you turn the battery switch off. And then that would completely depower the airplane. Again, we won't do that because that was uh, accomplished, uh, I believe, on the, uh, the procedure at least was uh, done, I think, on the electrical power down. Well, we could do it quick here. Just We won't just turn down the integral lights. We won't go through that. Well, let's turn the APU off since we're up here. External power we don't have, it's off. Uh, standby power, off. And then we wait two minutes. Uh, we'd have to time two minutes, and then after two minutes we turn the battery off. So let's go ahead and turn the battery off. And then we're down to a dark airplane again. And that would complete the termination check. So that completes the uh, checklist um, part two. And uh, we covered the Boeing checklist, and we covered the subsonic flight training checklist. And if we take the checklist here and we kind of put them apart, uh, two checklists, take your pick. One is not better than the other. Um, this is more like you'll see this looks more like an airline checklist. This looks more like a Boeing checklist, which it is. It's whatever you prefer. Um, again, some airlines will just use Boeing procedures and just use a Boeing checklist. Uh, bigger airlines will take it, modify it, massage it, make it fit their airline culture. Again, if you're, uh, this is the PMDG checklist. It's included with the PMDG model. This is the subsonic flight training checklist. If you're interested in this, subscribe to my channel, send me an email. I will give you a PDF file of it that is yours to keep and do with as you would like. You'll notice again there is a disclaimer here at the end that it's subsonic flight training, flight simulator gaming only. It's not intended for flight, so don't go out in your 747-400 and fly the airplane using my checklist. Uh, with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video briefing training tips. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's lower the HUD and go flying. Until our next briefing, keep the blue side up. Captain Al, out.